Jun Ha helps Take Young take the protagonist to the clinic, and as soon as they enter, the doctor asks Jun Ha to leave. Sejin's mother was present when Yundu was being carried in by Tae Kyung, so when she tells Sejin, we see the secretary bringing the news to Chan Sik. In the next scene, Jun Ha angrily goes to the Gong family company, ready to confront the president, as he is one of the people he holds responsible for what happened to the protagonist. He enters Chan Sik's office, but fortunately for them, Chan Sik had already left for the clinic. Sejin tries to calm Jun Ha who only relaxes after finding out that both the woman and the baby are fine. Back with Tae Kyung, we see Yundu has been taken to a room to rest and be observed. Tae Kyung stays by her side the entire time, and when her belongings are brought in, the doctor notices the matching mother and baby bracelets he had given her were in her bag. Taking the box, Tae Kyung discovers that his beloved had a third bracelet made with his name on it, and at this moment, he becomes even more emotional. Later, the president visits Tae Kyung, and in the doctor's office, we see the two of them talking. Despite the scare, Chan Sik wants his son to separate from Yun Du and even goes as far as to threaten to tell In OK if Tae Kyung continues with the woman. But Tae Kyung makes it clear that he would rather be seen as a stranger by the president than as a son under these circumstances. Now let's talk about happier things, Yoo Myung is taking care of Soo Jiam so that Dong Wook can attend an interview, and taking advantage of the moment alone, she delicately talks to the girl about her feelings towards her father. In the end, Soo Jiam fully supports the idea of the two becoming a couple. At night, Tae Kyung leaves Yun Du's side for a few hours and goes to the Gong family house to talk to Chan Sik. There, he kneels in front of the residence to apologize to the president and, through tears, explains that he doesn't want to leave the protagonist because his life changed completely with her. Without the woman, he would return to being a lonely person mistreated by the rest of his family, so Tae Kyung implores the president to keep the secret, and when the time is right, he and Yun Du will tell the family. Chan Sik ends up accepting this truce but wishes for real to be as bad of a child as Tae Kyung, which, considering Tae Kyung's resilience and kindness, means he would be a wonderful child. The next day, before sunrise, Jun Ha takes advantage of the probably empty clinic to visit Yun Du and bring some food with him. In the protagonist's room, he recalls having told her to terminate the pregnancy if she ever became pregnant by him, and now he apologizes for saying that. He leaves shortly after, but Hyun Woo, already awake and sleeping on sight, spots the strange man with a cap and tries to see who it is. However, Jun Ha is faster and leaves before Dr. Cha can identify him. Then Tae Kyung arrives at the clinic, and when his brother-in-law explains about the strange man, the doctor immediately knows it's Jun Ha and goes to her room to check if everything is alright. Later, we see Dong Wook telling Yu Myung about what happened to his sister. Despite the striking similarity to what happened with her sister-in-law, who is also in the hospital, it doesn't cross their minds that it could be the same person. Meanwhile, Se Jin and Jun Ha are summoned to the president's office, where Chan Sik asks them to forget about the headline involving Tae Kyung. He also makes it clear that if the news spreads, he will know it was them, as only the three of them and those involved know about the rumor. Afterward, the secretary and Jun Ha go to his new apartment to think of a new plan, as the previous one is no longer viable. While considering the story Yundu and the doctor told about how they met, both realize that the protagonist is the person who scratched the wrong car that day at the hotel, meaning she was already pregnant at that time, which makes Jun Ha the real father, but neither shares this thought with the other. Now it seems both want to pursue what they think is best, even if they continue maintaining a false partnership. It's worth noting that the protagonist still doesn't know that Sei Jin was Jun Ha's mistress, unlike the secretary, who has already connected all the dots. Switching to Wu He, we see she sets up a couple's meeting with Su Jong, but she wants Dae Sang to change his entire look to appear wealthy. When he realizes this, he argues with his girlfriend and says he won't meet her friends until Wu He loses the shame of him being a simpler person. If you missed the previous video, 
Wu He is plotting for Dae Sang to be a donor for the couple who wants to conceive, but she hasn't told her boyfriend, and I can't see how this will work. Returning to the protagonist, Ji Myung visits after learning her sister-in-law is well. Yun Du encourages Ji Myung to pursue Hyun Woo and honestly express her feelings, as only then can two proud people resolve their issues. However, the conversation doesn't go as Ji Myung expected, because before she can say anything, Dr. Cha requests a divorce, claiming he doesn't understand why she didn't trust him enough to tell the truth about what happened to their first baby, even though Ji Myung explained she was exhausted and didn't know what to do. Honestly, I used to love Hyun Woo's character, but now he just frustrates me as he continually upsets his wife, who is now pregnant, something he wanted so much. In the next scene, we see Wu He dining with Su Jong and Chun Myung. Dae Sang indeed doesn't show up for dinner with the couple, taking the opportunity to mention that her fake husband wants to make a donation to help couples. Wu He gives them hope that they are finally a step closer to having a child. On the way out, Dae Sang picks up Wu He in a borrowed car and the clothes she had set aside for him. But in the vehicle, he makes it clear to his girlfriend that this is the first and last time he will do this, as Dae Sang isn't ashamed of who he is, nor should Wu He be. Returning to our protagonist, she gives Tae Young the present, connecting the three more than ever. However, as peace is short-lived in dramas, as soon as the doctor returns to the clinic reception, he encounters Jun Ha. Jun Ha is there to say he knows the baby is his and that he will seek his rights to claim the child, which obviously starts a conflict between the two. However, Yen Du soon appears and says she wants to speak with Jun Ha privately. In the room, the protagonist makes it clear to Jun Ha that even though Tae Young isn't the biological father, he has been the one caring for real so far, making him more of a father than someone who merely shows up to cause trouble. Yun Du adds that even if the doctor hadn't appeared in her life, she would never return to Jun Ha, as she hasn't forgotten what he did and was willing to raise the child alone. It is only at this moment that the protagonist realizes that it was Jun Ha who wrote that headline. Due to all the stress, the protagonist soon starts feeling some pain again, prompting her to yell at Jun Ha to leave and never show up again. Once Yun Du has calmed down, she and Tae Young agree to reveal the truth to both their families, ensuring that this issue can no longer be used against them. Later, the couple returns home, and upon reaching the annex, they find Chan Sik waiting for them. He promises not to trouble them about their secret anymore but hopes that one day they will confess and ask for the family's forgiveness. Meanwhile, Ji Myung has spent the past few days bedridden, affected by her husband's decision. Sensing that something is wrong, in -ok talks to her, and for the first time, Ji Myung is honest. in -ok advises Ji Myung to have another conversation with Dr. Cha, sharing all her fears and expressing that she needs him by her side for the strength to continue with the pregnancy and that she loves him. Returning to the protagonist, Lady Eun takes the chance when the two are alone in the annex to show how much she studied while Yun Du was in the clinic. During these lessons, Tae Young finds a letter Lady Eun began writing to someone named Strawberry. As soon as the doctor questions her about it, Lady Eun decides to head home. Meanwhile, Ji Myung approaches her husband to discuss her feelings, pleading with him not to give up on building a family with her. The two agree that Ji Myung will be sincere about her feelings and not keep them to herself, allowing for more honest communication. Later, they attend a dinner celebrating Yun Du and Ryo's well-being. We see that Yun Du and the baby received many gifts and much affection from the Gong family. The evening improves even more when Tae Young calls Chan Sik, father, in front of everyone, a small gesture that brings great joy to his mother. The next day, Seijin returns to her frantic behavior, arranging a meeting with in -ok and Jun Ha. Jun Ha only learns of the meeting's purpose during the conversation and, determined not to stress Yun Du again, manages to leave the situation without revealing the protagonist's secret, much to the secretary's anger, thus ending their partnership. Meanwhile, Yun Du and Lady Eun are out together. Yun Du offers to correct the grammar in Lady Eun's letter to Strawberry without questioning the content. 
Afterward, while in the bathroom, Lady Yoon leaves the establishment after spotting a child resembling this person called Strawberry. This leads to her getting lost and panicking, while Yundu searches for her with Taekyung's help. Dr. Cha finds Lady Yoon first, sitting with tears streaming down her face at the entrance of a building with Strawberry's name. She feels a wave of relief when she sees him. Later, in Lady Yoon's room, we learn what prompted her to leave like that. Years ago, when she had no money and lived with her mother-in-law, she had a daughter nicknamed Strawberry. One day, she returned home to find her mother-in-law had given the child away. Lady Yoon knew they couldn't care for the little one, especially after Chansik fell ill. Fearful of losing him too, she stopped searching, but she never forgot her little girl. This is a secret Lady Yoon has kept, one even Chansik doesn't know. She asks the couple not to mention it and, for the first time, genuinely thanks them for having Taekyung as her grandson. In the next scene, we see Yu Myung and Dong Wook on a date. She expresses her feelings for the last time, prompting him to give this unexpected love a chance, and they start dating. The following day, Yundu and Taekyung announce at breakfast that they wish to share something very important with the entire family that evening, intending to reveal the truth. However, the truth comes out earlier than planned when, at a company event, Seijin plans to tell in okay the couple's secret. Despite Junha's attempts to disrupt the secretary's plan, he informs Yundu of what is about to happen, and as Inoke steps out to take a call, she finds Yundu on her knees, apologizing for lying about the baby being Taekyung's. Inoke immediately panics and refuses to let Yundu touch her. Seijin seizes the opportunity to be by Inoke's side. Inoke leaves the event and goes straight to Taekyung's clinic, where, after confirming the truth with her son, she declares that she will no longer accept Yundu or the child as part of her family, despite her son's wishes. Things worsen at the Gong family home, where, before they can explain to Lady Yoon, Inoke causes another scene, ruining their chance to clarify in front of everyone once more. Later, after each couple member listens to what everyone has to say, Taekyung leaves Yundu to recuperate in the annex and confronts Jun Ha to find out what he and Seijin are plotting. Focusing on Inoke and Chansik's conversation, he confesses to his wife that he already knew the truth and comments that he doesn't believe this is the right way to handle the situation. After all, his family treated Taekyung the way Inoke is treating Yundu's baby, and she didn't like it. As expected, Inoke ignores these words and even goes to the annex to take Yundu, against the protagonist's will, to her family's home to tell Bang Nim and the others, without allowing Taekyung to be by her side. Once again, we see another family in turmoil, but at least Dae Sang is present to support and protect his niece. When Taekyung calls Yundu, Inoke forces her to lie to her son. In the next scene, Inoke demands Taekyung choose between her and Yundu in the annex, prompting him to reaffirm his desire to live his life with the protagonist. While packing, Taekyung receives a call from Yundu via Daesang's phone, as Bang Nim confiscated hers. She asks him to stay in the annex so that in the coming days they can work on gaining both families' forgiveness and, hopefully, be together in the future. Now, I have to express my frustration with this drama. They are two 30-year-old adults who pay their own bills. Despite cultural differences, I find it hard to believe a 30-year-old woman hands her phone over to her mother and gets grounded like a teenager. The next day, Yundu goes to the Gong family home to beg for Inoke's forgiveness, while Taekyung does the same at Bang Nim's house. Unlike Inoke, Bang Nim expresses her disappointment with the couple's actions and her pain in not allowing them to be together. Unfortunately, the conversation is interrupted by Taekyung receiving a call from his grandmother, warning him that Yundu is at their house. When he arrives, he hears his mother saying she detests both the protagonist and the baby. Bang Nim gives in to the couple's desires and helps them by kneeling to plead for Inoke's forgiveness as well, but Inoke remains blinded by rage and refuses to have anything more to do with this family. 
Inok continues to blackmail the doctor, demanding he choose between her and his beloved, but Taekyung's response has changed. He now says he wants both in his life, so he and Yundu will wait for Inok to become comfortable with them living as a couple again. Later, Taekyung takes the protagonist to get some fresh air by the beach, and amidst the chaos, they find a moment of relaxation and decide on the name Hanol for the baby. What did you think of these episodes? I hope you enjoyed the summary. Leave your suggestions in the comments and subscribe. If you liked the video, like and share it to help me out. Until next time.